Hey guys, welcome to 5 nothing 100 nothing.com. My name is Fugget, and Fugget stands for Fittest Underdog Guru Using Intelligent Tactics. And today I want to talk to my undersized underdogs about a couple of questions I've gotten recently. And um, over the years as a personal trainer, I've gotten in the gym um, almost on a daily basis is from men asking how they can get their chest to look cut. So um, I've heard every answer from you just need to do flies, you know, or, um, you know, there's just certain special exercises that cut up the chest. And the thing is, is that an exercise itself isn't going to do it. It's going to be um, a few different um, approaches, a few different tactics to help to get that chest looking cut. So first off, I want to talk to you guys about what exactly the anatomy of the chest is. And you have two different pec muscles, a pec major and a pec minor. A pec major makes up the majority of the chest, hence the name major. The pec minor is really that area where a lot of you men want to get cut, okay? So it's the lower part of the chest. Now, it would seem to make sense that just training the pec minor would give you a more cut up look. So like doing a, a decline bench press or pec flies um, seem to target or dips seem to target that area a little bit more. Um, now you could do a lot of that and you know make that the bulk of your chest movements in the gym, but the, the real problem isn't really developing the muscle. Just like doing a lot of abdominal crunches isn't going to make your abs show. You know, it's going to be lowering your body fat. So when it comes to the exercises, you know, I tell people to stay with the basics. You know, the basics are best. So, you know, the, ba the basic chest movements are going to be anything from a machine to a barbell to dumbbells, what have you, and body weight push-ups. Um, all of those right there, any type of pressing motion is going to develop the chest and give it that muscle tone and more uh, tension, uh, uh, hardness, have you, underneath the body fat that you still need to lose. So sticking with any type of chest press machine, uh, incline, the decline presses, dips, uh, just train that pec fully, you know, make it strong, you know, um, you're still going to get some secondary um, work in your triceps, the back of the arm and the front of the shoulder, the anterior deltoid. So sticking with those movements, you guys, things, uh, uh, movements that are going to allow you to use a maximal load safely, you know, in that uh, rep range of if you're looking for power, you know, looking at five to seven reps, you're looking for hypertrophy or growth anywhere from eight and even up to 15. And there's not a magic number there, but you want to use a substantial load that's going to challenge you, yet you can still do with good form and without pain. So, you know, sticking to those basics are best, um, building up that chest muscle. So there's the flip side where guys are always, in, um, one camp just wants to always, um, you know, figure out the exercise that's going to do it. And other camp just says, well, I know I'm not going to exercise. I'm just going to diet. Well, that's for all well and good. But let's say that you have very underdeveloped chest muscles. Um, think about if you take a um, bedspread, you're putting on the sheet on your bed and, and it's going to tuck underneath um, the sheet that you sleep on, not the, not the top sheet. So if you took that sheet and you spread it really tight on your bed, What's going to happen is, um, now I, I was to take like a pea or a marble and stick it underneath that sheet. Um, and then you try to find the marble. Well, you may not be able to see it really. You might see just a little bit of a contour change, but you'd have to kind of maybe feel it to, to see where it's at. Now, compare that to taking, say, a softball. If you took a softball and you stuck it under that sheet and then you stretch that sheet back over it, you're going to see that little bump. You're going to see a more pronounced um, curve. And that's how I equate that sheet being uh, your skin, the fascia around the muscle, and any excess body fat. So think about if you take uh, a couple of heavy comforters and you put it over that softball you and you were to have somebody just jump on that bed, they may not see that softball now because there's all that extra excess tissue or the layers, fat, meaning the covers. If you take that, those covers off 
you're going to see that softball. And so what I equate that to is that, that those covers are your body fat. So when you tr strip off the fat, you're now going to see the shape of the muscle. So some of you have a lot of muscle mass on your frame. You just need to lose body fat. And some of you have no muscle mass and it's more like a marble under there. And you need to build it up with a little bit of strength and build up to where you're almost like a softball under that cover. So the P versus the softball analogy, I think really helps with um, trying to figure out where you're at with your muscle development and where you need to go and the strategies you need to do um, to see a chiseled up chest. Um, diet, huge. I wish there was another answer. If it was just exercise, I would charge a hell of a lot more um, to personal train, but really your diet's gonna be key to the last little finishing touches to, to getting that body fat off the chest so you can see definition. So um, if you think about it, if you see somebody who's overweight, maybe has 15, 20 pounds to lose, I guarantee you they take their shirt off at the beach or whatnot, and you're not going to see a cut chest and a beer belly. It just doesn't happen, you know? Um, so losing body fat is key. And of course, there's multiple factors with that. It could be everything from um, you need to just cut your calories. Could be you need to get rid of uh, simple carbohydrate, um, processed food, um, you know, just showing some kind of a caloric deficit to strip off body fat. So use a combination of healthy eating as well as the appropriate exercise, the right amount, and you're going to see results. It's going to get cut there, right? Now, let's say you're doing those things and it's still taking a while, okay? Now, one of the biggest things is what's affecting like your hormones, you know, because your hormones have a lot to do with either weight loss or muscle gain, fat loss, etc. And to be honest, alcohol are just really empty calories. You know, they're not nutrient dense. There's no nutritional value. It doesn't sustain life. Um, in fact, it messes up a lot of, um, you know, uh, healthy bodily functions and you know, if you're really serious about seeing your pec muscles looking cut, being lean, looking healthy, then that's one thing that when you eliminate it, you'll notice a result of weight loss pretty fast. And, um, you know, it negatively affects your natural production of growth hormone. Your testosterone levels can plummet from it. And so those two things alone are going to make it a lot harder, if not impossible, to really get cut up pecs. So eliminate those empty calories, you guys. Um, all in all, as men age, let's say I'm talking to you know a 35 to 55 or older demographic, sometimes you'll see in the gym these guys that will, um, it looks like their upper pec is like drooped and their lower pec is like really what they got. Everything just starts to go south. Um, for you guys, it's imperative to keep your body fat low and do things that are gonna challenge more of the upper pectoralis or the pec major. So the incline presses or incline machine, things that are gonna challenge that area and put some bulk from that collarbone or the clavicle down and fill out that upper pec again. And um, <clears throat> that's, that's something that I think um, doesn't really get um, looked at mostly. I think guys will, when they're trying to like, you know, get in the gym and they're all about machismo and how much they can bench, they're usually on flat uh, dumbbell presses or flat barbell press. Um, but get on some incline work, you guys. Work on that upper pec. If you're using cables, anchor those cables low and go up, whether it's a fly or whether it's a press, and fill out that upper pec, you know? And then when you have a combination of good diet, um, then you're gonna start to see that fat d diminish. And if you're a guy who's like stuck on the scale or think that your arms might be shrinking or, you know, um, you know, like when I used to think when I was younger, I need to be 200 pounds. Like that's a man. A man is not under 200 pounds and all this crap. Um, it didn't look good on me. I looked too thick, too puffy. And when the shirt came off at the beach, the tail, I mean, the, that you can't hide that. When you have the great unveiling, you're going to see the results of good eating habits and good training habits. So if you guys want to look good with that shirt off or look good naked or what have you, whatever's floating your boat, um, you know, start to pay attention to those things, you know, those little things become the big things. So, you know, watching your diet, you know, training with heavy enough weight to build that pec muscle and keep it developed and, you know, watching, you know, simple sugars and eliminating alcohol before you know it, guys, you can see those pecs tighten up. 
your hormone profiles are gonna be better and your body starts to become a fat burning furnace for you and not working against you. So, you know, count the cost of your habits and if it's really worth it to you and, um, you know, go from there. So guys, 5100nothing.com. I appreciate the questions. I hope that helps you guys. If you get some before after photos or just wanna shoot a story of success, please do. And any other questions, let me know in the comments. You guys have a great day.